first want to go uh, straight to our guest. Pleasure to have him here with us. John Hoopenthal is the current Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruction, and he's running for re-election. And his political career includes serving as city councilman, state representative, and state senator. And I uh, want to welcome him to the program. Th- John, thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. Well, it's great to be with you, Shane, and uh, uh, what a pleasure. Now, let's talk a little bit about Superintendent of Public Instruction. You've held a number of positions uh, uh, pl- in political office. What is the job of the Superintendent of Public Instruction? Well, the job of the Superintendent of Public Instruction is to have oversight responsibility. We have about 2,500 schools, about 1.1 million students, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 65,000 uh, certificated, certificated teachers, um, it's to oversee that entire system and to uh, regulate it, to make sure that it complies with the laws of the legislature, to make sure that it complies with the laws of the State Board of Education, and also to lead it, to um, inject it with uh, ideas for improving education, to do great research, to uh, look in depth, and also um, to create a general cultural environment uh, in which we fashion and form students to have them grow up to be Americans that, uh, in a way that uh, is in concert with our traditional values and the great ideas that form this nation. I think it's important to understand that, uh, for our listeners at least, that uh, the superintendent of public instruction is the fifth highest elected official in Arizona behind the governor, secretary of state, attorney general, and the treasurer. So, I mean, this isn't just your casual position where you're coming in and and just kind of skedaddling around, if you will, for a couple of years and then uh, going back and, and vying for re-election. I want to talk uh, a little bit, of, uh, of course, about education, what's going on throughout the country, what's specifically going on in Arizona. And uh, Common Core is obviously an issue that is very controversial right now. Tell us where it is that you stand on Common Core, and we'll go from there. Well, Common Core... Um derived itself from an organization called Achieve that uh, had some CEOs, Craig Barrett, uh, Lou Gerstner, and uh, a number of governors on it, and they looked across the standards across the nation, and they found that almost all of them, except for about three or four, had standards so low that they just in no way, shape, or form could um, prepare a, a student to for success in college, for success in community college, for any kind of success out in a career, and you could observe the students were passing a test, then going on to college and going into low levels of remediation. And when you start college there, you have no chance of getting a degree. And so they um, contracted to develop a set of standards, uh, and uh, the those set of standards were focused on those things that were necessary to, to for some degree of success but also um, were teachable in 180 days. One of the problems with the standards across the country was they were so bloated that there were with so many concepts that weren't focused that a good teacher would take 240 days to teach them, and the standards were actually doing damage instead of help. The problem, as always, in all culture across the nation is that we as conservatives have to constantly be vigilant because any time that you're changing anything in education, you that our cult, our conservative vigilance has to go into place because we know that there are people who inject ideas that are highly toxic into our educational system, and that's the key. There were a number of huge conservative victories in Common Core, the teaching of reading through phonics. Now you might say, well, everybody had teaching of reading through phonics. Not so. Right down at the University of Arizona. We had a professor, Dr. Ken Goodman, who developed a system called whole language that was completely ineffective at teaching reading. And that system spread throughout all of California, and it created a disaster. They were certified three different times by the RAND Corporation to stay up in the worst schools in the nation. Almost so, a direct so, outcome uh, of uh, whole language. John, I think we could, so, talk, we could talk a lot about the results and, and yeah. what, what's being created? But I want to ask bottom, you. I, I want to ask you this. Us, the bottom line for us as conservatives is to filter through, consolidate our victories in this battle over standards, and to filter out those things that are toxic, those things that are inappropriate, 
those things that are ideas that we know have not been effective in society, have not been effective in economy. Well, well, John, what, what I want to ask you is this. Uh, I, I've heard you speak a number of times. Back in 2010, 2011, you're very well versed in the Founding Fathers. You, you have a, a, a solid knowledge of the Constitution. I, I, will you explain to me the constitutional framework under which you justify this program. I mean, here it is. That, uh, of course, the federal government did not create this program, but nevertheless, there are federal monies that are involved in the acceptance of this program. It, given that you are an individual who understands uh, the idea of federalism, how do you justify adopting this program in the state of Arizona knowing that there's a quid pro quo going on? Well, I don't justify adopting it. It was adopted um, almost a year before I got into office. The, uh, what I have to do now as a conservative, I know I know perhaps more than any other policymaker in, in Arizona the toxic effect of the federal government on education. I've done, I've read the research studies and done research myself which shows that as schools participate in more and more of these federal programs, the results don't get better and better, they get worse. There's a negative correlation associated with the degree to which a school, a school district, is involved in federal programs. But the my problem is, my challenge is looking forward. Well, what I see is a set of standards that were adopted by the State Board of Education. This set of standards has a number of huge conservative victories. It has the phonics victory. But we now have a national consensus that phonics um, is the appropriate way to teach reading, letter identification, phonemic awareness, phonics, on to syllables, then on to uh, reading, the la- reading the language, all in first grade. That's a standard for uh, first okay, grade. Okay, John, so, so I understand the, the, this idea that we may, receive, we, we may achieve certain results, but uh, you're telling us, well, okay, the program was adopted one year prior to you coming into the office. It, it almost the, the, the tone of, of that comment almost implies that, well, it wasn't my fault. You took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. And, and well, say, well, hold on, is. John. At the I same did. time, you're saying that Common Core opponents are barbarians at the gate. So wh- which is it? I mean, is this a constitutionally permissible program, or is this something that you're just kind of setting the constitutionally constitutionality aside and saying, you know what, well, I didn't do it, I wasn't... I wasn't the superintendent of public instruction. What I have to do is guide us forward in a constitutional (laughs) manner from this point. I'm not going to go around and and, um, relive history. We have challenges across the spectrum. We have have enormous challenges at the national level right now with the economic policies that are in place. What we all have to do as conservatives is we have to uh, assess the ground that we stand on and move forward in a constitutional manner. How do you move forward in a constitutional matter? Our our, our state board adopted a set of standards after eight public hearings. Their adoption of those standards was perfectly constitutional. What was unconstitutional, what is a myriad of unconstitutionality that we see is the federal involvement in education. Correct. These and are, so the, the state the, of Arizona is accepting but, money in exchange for complying with the program. That's fundamentally unconstitutional. Well, the the truth be known is that they got nothing for for adopting those standards. They they had applied for a grant and they got they got nothing for adopting those standards. Well, correct me if they I'm wrong. They adopted those John. standards. I, I, somebody might say they adopted those standards in the hope that they would get something, but they adopted those standards. There was no quid pro quo at the time in other states, Texas and uh, Virginia and, and uh, South Carolina. Minnesota, they, um, uh, Alaska, they didn't adopt these standards. So it wasn't a quid quo quo. And I'm not just here defending the state board. Somebody else needs to come on to the state board. They did what they did. Now I'm moving forward and I'm saying a number of these standards are highly conservative. I'm not going to throw them out just because of uh, these are good standards. We don't throw out standards um, for no reason at all. John, I want to ask you about this. About over and over again, is that somebody has a problem with one of these standards? If they're, if one of these standards violates our values about the Constitution and other things, that they need to come in and point it out, and we'll work on it. Or you have leaders already in office who have taken an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution that will fight against that. I mean, there's this perception that 
that Common Core is is state-led and voluntary, and nothing could be further from the truth. There's a $4.35 billion race to the top program, and to fully complete compete for the race to the top money, states have to adopt standards common to these multiple states. And what would that program be? be? Common Core. In addition, you have the U.S. Department of Education that earmarked $350 million for the development of two tests that would accompany these standards. And in order to even have an opportunity at that money, you've got to accept these tests. You've got to accept these standards. You've got to accept Common Core. So, uh, John, uh, with all due respect, I, 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 I get what it is that you're saying. You're looking at results. But I think it's it's unfair to say that because somebody else did it, you're just trying to implement well, no, it at, at this point I'm, constitutionally. Well, with all due respect, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm looking at a set of standards in front of me, and I... I'm perfectly willing to review these standards. I mean, I take a look at what Indiana did, who both got rid of Common Core, and nobody back there in Indiana thinks they got rid of Common Core. Sandra Sosky, who's been a big critic of the standards, does not. Terrence Moore from Hillsdale College does, does not think that they did something appropriate. Um, Zed Werman does not think that they did. They, they, all of these critics of Common Core, the leading national critics who testified across the country, <laughs> Thinks, they all think what Indiana did was just create a mess. I am a thoughtful leader. I engage, I engage, um, I have a 20 year track record of being a solid conservative. I act, I act and move forward in a conservative fashion. The, uh, what I have to, what I see is I am perfectly willing to review any one of these standards, but I'm not going to do what Indiana did, which was create a mess in response to pressure. I just don't, that's not the way I operate. I don't respond to pressure. I respond based on principles, and my principles are conservative. My principles are based in the Constitution. I'm going to move forward in a way in which I adopt conservative standards, and I've been listening carefully. I've listened to hundreds of hours of this discussion by Sandra Stosky, Zev Worman, James Milgram from, Stan- from Stanford, um, and, and Terrence Moore. Not only have I listened to hundreds of hours of their testimony, but I made lists of questions and called them personally and wrote down all their issues and then went back and had staff analyze them. We are doing all of the homework that nobody in Indiana did. There were no conservatives guiding that process by which they set up new standards. They just created a mess. There's John, nothing for conservatives to be proud of John, what Indiana did. John, let, let me ask you a question. This is Donnie. Um, mm-hmm. and just so I'm sure that I've got things right here, Common Core is a program which the goal is to advance national standards across the nation, correct? Well, an example would be... Well, is is it or isn't it? Uh, I mean, isn't it? Isn't one of the goals to advance national standards across the nation? That's true, isn't it? I mean, that's what Common Core is all about. One of the main things. Well, that would not be my goal. I'm talking about Common Core. I would look at standards in front of me, and I'm not going to get rid of phonics. I'm not going to get rid of a child needing to know their multiplication fact. John, that that's a real easy question. One of the goals of Common Core is to promote national standards, standards that cross the nation, every state. That's really what one of their goals, isn't it? I'm not saying it's wrong or bad. I, I just want to know if I'm I'm reading it right. I've read a lot on it, and it seems like that's that's the guts of it is to create national standards across the nation. Is that well, right? Whoever was with that would have to speak to that. I can tell you what my my goals are is to have a solid set of standards that are are something that we as conservatives can be proud of and that if a student passes this test that's showing they achieve these standards, they can go off to college and have a reasonable chance of success of getting a college degree, have a good chance of graduating from community college with a technical degree, that they are ready, they have some they have a good solid foundation. That, 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 where are those goal. standards coming from, John? Those standards you just talked about that you would support. They're coming from Common Core, right? Well, let's start with Fonny. Holy It smokes. comes from Karen Wolf. Karen Ann Wolf, she was the, um, she's famous among conservative circles for her research on, on showing uh, that phonics is the very best way to teach reading. Uh, Louisa Maltz, her research in reading, these are the people that the, the reading standard came from. 
to the mathematics standards saying that children have to know their multiplication facts by the end of third grade. Uh, are these so common core standards? Uh, sorry to interrupt, but are these hold common on, core standards? Are these common the, core standards? These, those are the standards the State Board of Education adopted. Are they common they core college standards? And career ready. College and career ready. Are they common core standards? John, yeah, yeah, the college and career ready standards is a name that you, you, you change common core to reflect a different name, college and career ready standards. That's right. And there's a reason, because common <laughs> core has become defined, common core has become defined as a federal takeover of education. I'm, I, I feel completely as someone who has always resisted the federal government's intrusion into education. And there's my track record. I took on Tucson Unified High School District in the ethnic studies uh, debate. And I won that case in court. John, and that's I'm what an, John. I am an effective. I John, the fact effective. that you have done am, that is why on, I respect. On, John, let me let me interrupt on, you here. Hold on, hold on, I want to just tell on, you that's why on, the fact. Hold on, hold on, John. Hold on, no, no hold on, not going hold to hold on. Hold on. Let me complete my my statement. Wow. I I am an effective conservative. I took them on in that ethnic studies, which was a completely toxic La Raza, program. I get it. And I won that case. Yes, you did. That's why I respect you in that in that regard. That's why I see um, some inconsistency here. There's a disconnect. I see you fighting battles in the past. I've heard you speak for a number of years now. I've watched what you've done in 2010, 2009, and the things that you were doing and the battles that you were engaging in. For me, there's a disconnect between the, the battles that you were fighting then and that constitutional congruency that existed versus what's going on here. And I think that's the frustration with so many conservatives out there saying, uh, we're, we don't quite get this. Because well, you, you talk a lot about you. standards, but you're not talking about the constitutionality of the program. Well, the my moving forward is in completely in a constitutional fashion. I'm, I'm affected as superintendent of public instruction by all sorts of unconstitutional actions that are happening at every level all the time. I have to, you know, I'm the guy who's sailing through a hurricane and has to constantly keep his bearings as to where he wants to go. My sense of it is the challenge that we have with the standards are is to look through and see, okay, there. if you have these national influences, what is constitutional, what is not, and what do we have concerns about? And I have kept an ear for that. I have been, you know, I constantly am running radar across the screen. We're listening to all the critics of it. I, I called up Zev Worman. And I talked to him twice for an hour and a half each time, talking through in detail his concerns about the mathematics standard. I called up Sanders, uh, you know, I had a, we had a forum in which we spoke with Sandra Stotsky up there with me. I listened to her for that two and a half hour forum. And then I called her back afterwards and talked to her for another hour and a half to make sure I had it exactly right as to what her concerns were. I, you know, I do an enormous amount of research. Now, now, You're John, we're going to take a, a quick job. break. John, we got to take a quick break, and okay. we'll come right back to it, continue off the conversation. I'd like, love to talk to you as well about civics, constitution in the classroom, and the progress that we're making there as well. Folks, uh, more to come with John Hoopenthal on the other side. You're listening to Liberty Storm. I'm Shane Krauser, and we are Independent Talk 1100 KFNX, where freedom and the Constitution live. We'll be right back. All right, folks, welcome back. Before we go back to John Hoopenthal, who's the Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruct uh, Instruction, I want to let you know about a, a great event that's going on tomorrow morning. That's Saturday, June 21st at 10 in the morning. It's going to be held at the North Scottsdale Christian Church. And they are located at 28700 North Pima Road in Scottsdale. That's 28700 North Pima Road in Scottsdale. You know, they do these weekly events, and they just do a f uh, phenomenal job bringing in some great speakers. Tomorrow morning at 10, uh, Christine Jones, she is a candidate for uh, governor. She's going to be speaking. She, she sounds like she's going to be the keynote speaker. Diane Douglas will be there as well. And uh, this is an absolutely free event. Again, this is Moral Action Ministry, North Scottsdale Christian Church, and uh, they are at 28700 North Pima Road in Scottsdale. It all begins at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, hope to see you there. Let's go right back to uh, John Hoopenthal. As I said, he's the Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruction. He's vying for uh, re-election. And, John, I want to, uh, uh, as I'm 
thinking about what we discussed during the first segment, it seems to a certain degree we're having two different debates going on here. There's a good idea, bad idea, one that's focused on results, and then there's another debate going on talking about constitutionality, unconstitutionality. Now, uh, and, and I want to give you an opportunity to, to explain yourself. Because you and I both claim to be principled conservatives. You and I have shared the stage. We've been at many of the same events where we've both spoken. And I think when we, when we listen, if you had an objective individual listening to both of us speak, you would say, yeah, those guys believe in small government. How is it that, uh, though, that you came out and referred to individuals who were opposed to Common Core, other principled conservatives, as barbarians at the gate? What was it that you meant by that? What I meant was a reference to Indiana specifically. The I think the pr- approach there was it is just a mob gets together, and you need mob energy sometimes if you're going to get things accomplished, but sometimes it creates chaos. And what they did in Indiana was the barbarians at the gate. They came in and they trashed their standards to say they got rid of Common Core, and they achieved no conservative outcome. They did not get rid of Common Core and they trash their standards. I've watched that debate carefully. What I want to do, I want to accumulate every concern over these standards that we have and to move this review of these standards to taking complete possession of them in terms of Arizona. I want that that process to take place in a disciplined fashion by which we move from A, where we are, to some B with a better set of standards. And it should be guided by these principles which Indiana was not. It should be guided by the idea that a good teacher can teach each grade level's worth of standards in 180 days. When the mob broke through the gates, they just wanted to trash things. They were angry. And what they did is they overstuffed the standards in Indiana. Those standards cannot be taught by a good teacher in 180 days. You can puff your chest with pride and say, look at all what these kids are going to learn. But, you know, when you bu- when you bloated it up and you have your very best people looking at it and they say that can't be taught in 180 days, then what you created was trash that's going to damage your education system. I won't abide by that. We, we have that principle is one. Another principle is stair-stepping, that as you go from kindergarten through 12th grade, each year's worth of standards, when compared with the prior year, should be roughly 1.1% academic years ahead of the prior year. So what we want to do is we want to have a significant increase in productivity of our system. If somebody goes through and puts in a set of standards where one year's uh, set of standards, when you compare it to the prior year, is two academic years ahead, well, there there aren't even 5% of our schools in this nation that are averaging two academic years in a calendar year. You have trashed the standards. Those, those principles I've been very hard to enforce in the standard realm. One thing I take pride on is not only be a principal conservative, but being an effective conservative that carries out my my constitutional obligations in a way that's effective. And we and it might have been effective in Arizona. I did 212 pieces of legislation, not one press release, where I was cleaning up laws, streamlining, reducing bureaucracy, bill after bill after bill. And I have an incredible track record. Number two in Arizona history. Only 167 bills. I'm a workhorse. I work and work, and I research night and day to make sure that I'm guiding things in a profound and deep way. And I, I am a small government. When I was in fourth grade, my family went down and we bought a car for forty dollars in the junkyard, drug at home. I, I spent three days helping my dad fix that car. We drove that car for six years. I know the value of a dollar, and I know there's still families out there stretching to make ends meet. And I treasure the the idea that I can help reduce the spending of government. Over my 20 years in in elected office, Arizona ranked sixth in the nation at uh, improving jobs, improving the economy, despite the last four, four rough years. And we ranked number two in, in, in citizen satisfaction with state government, and we ranked number 46 in the cost per capita. But, what, but, record, but again, as a... My record of small government... John... As being a small government conservative, as you call yourself, getting back to education, you would agree with me, as a person who believes in federalism, that in principle it's better to allow the state to establish their standards than the federal government to establish standards, or that, or offering money 
in exchange for the state to establish standards that the federal government has endorsed. You, you would agree with the, me that's better to have oh, state-established run standards. Every, all involvement of the federal government in education has been toxic. Just look at our ACT scores. Look at our SAT scores. Where is the dividend for this enormous gusher of, of spending out of the federal government? We, we take a look at what, how we did our teacher training in Arizona. We didn't have two pennies to rub together, so we've got all the teachers in from across the state, and we trained and trained and trained, and, and we said to them, look, we don't have the money to go out and train the teachers with hired trainers. You all are going to have to tra train them. So our teachers went out and did the training in New York where they had hundreds of millions of dollars of federal money. The training was done to the teachers, not by the teachers the way I did it in Arizona. They have an absolute all-out revolt in New York. We in Arizona, we are proceeding right along, and we have the highest increase in our high school AIM scores that we've had in a decade. So it's conservative. You have to do your conservative principles, but you have to be effective, too, because guess what? People don't want – the voters won't bring you, bring your conservative principles back if you're not effective in what you do. And I've, I've been effective for, two, you know, for 30 years now, going all the way back to Chandler City Council. So, John, I wanna, before, before we take a quick break, I want to I want to move on to another topic. There's a few other things I want to hit on. Of course, uh, you knew that this was coming. This hit the news yesterday. Anonymous blogging that you are engaged in talking about your views and defending and advocating your next run. Uh, I, I know that you've expressed regret about that. Uh, w any thoughts that you're willing to share about what it is that's been uncovered uh, that you were involved with over the last couple of years? Well, I wasn't defending or advocating my next run at all. The, uh, the overwhelming majority of my blog posts were on economics, where I went out to liberal blog sites, and they would do posts, and I would take their economic arguments apart. When uh, Karl Marx posted his stuff in the 1840s, 1850s, Karl Manager from the Austrian School of Economics came in with his principles of economics, and he showed that Karl Marx's ideas would absolutely be ineffective at running an economy. And when the Soviet Union adopted Karl Marx's ideas, it happened exactly the way Karl Manager predicted. It, their economic production dropped 80% and 40 million people starved to death. So this system, this grandiose system that was supposed to be beneficial to poor people, instead 40 million poor people starved to death. John, we're going to take a, we're gonna take, warriors, John, we're gonna take a quick break. Our, we come back on the other side, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. You're listening to Liberty Storm. I'm Shane Krauser, and we are Independent Talk 1100 KFNX. More about the Constitution on the other side. All right, folks, welcome back. You're tuned in to Liberty Storm. I'm Shane Krauser, and, of course, it is Freedom Friday. On the line with us is John Hoopenthal. He is Arizona's superintendent of public instruction. Been hitting on a couple of issues here, primarily Common Core and the role of John Hoopenthal as he vies for re-election. And, Hey, Donnie, let's talk about some things here. Well, I've got one question, John. Okay, you, you've told you've told us several times in the last almost hour that that you're a small government conservative, and and you take great pride in in looking at the constitutional basis for the for the things that you advocate and the things that you support. Pretty close to right, is that? Okay. That's not that's not what I say. That's my my record. I got are you are you are you a, are you a, are you a small government conservative? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Then then let me ask you this. How does a small government conservative embrace federal programs like race to the top? Well, let me tell you. I took the federal government on in our structured English immersion program and beat them to a pulp. They were trying to get rid of structured English immersion in Arizona, and we now have the leading program of the nation. We had a research company come in, and they showed that our structured English immersion, you, where English language you, learners you know what have to I learn under, to speak, that, read, and write, that, that, they have to learn to speak, And I think and that's great, John. The, I the, think but, that's no, absolutely this great. This isn't just great. This is an example uh, but, of what you do. But here's my question. How, how is a small government conservative... Do you embrace and support uh, a federal program like Race to the Top in Arizona? How do you adopt that as an official in Arizona if you're a small government conservative? I don't get that. The 
race to the top program and application was done before I got in office. Oh, hold it a minute. To, Stop I, right there. Case, right there. It's not a case of me embracing it. It's hold it, hold it one second, though. Most, hold it one it's, second. It's, I've got a letter from you. Uh, here, here's a letter from you on May 25th, 2010 uh-huh. to, to, to Jan Brewer. And what you say is Arizona's race to the top application provides an excellent opportunity to accelerate the work for education reform, and I confirm my support for this plan. It, you did more than, than inherit it. You told Jan Brewer you were all in. How does a small government conservative do that? Well, I don't know about that letter, but I do know this. That when it comes well, I got to the letter taking here. on the federal government, when it comes to taking on the federal government and repelling them, nobody's been more than I have. We defeated them on the ethnic studies program, we, both in state court and in federal court. We have uh, repelled them when it comes to the structured English immersion and when it comes to waivers from the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. No state has done a better job than I've done at repelling their to the state of Arizona. John, I want to go on to, uh, as we close this out, I want to talk about uh, one other issue that's uh, very, very important to me, and that's constitutional awareness in the classroom. I spent Uh a lot of time over the last 10 years in junior high schools and high schools, public junior high schools and high schools all over the state, let alone the country. And I think uh, there's no question, I'm certain you would agree with me, that we have we have some serious issues here with uh, our students understanding what it means to be an American, understanding uh, just good old-fashioned civics, uh, limited government, popular sovereignty. What sort of things are you focusing on to bring that sort of awareness into the classroom? Well, for starters, Shane, I've been a huge admirer of yours over the years. You've been relentless about moving into the schools and doing lectures with the students, and I repeatedly get feedback that you you wow the students, that you inspire them, that you, you that they get it, that they understand that you're 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 a one man, um, you know, locomotive for moving constitutional values into our schools. So we all need to um, celebrate the action that you've taken, and it's it's been an enormously powerful thing. We, you know, I worked with Ken Jackson to set up a small sort of version of what you're doing, uh, Constitution in the Classroom, and they've gone out to now thousands and thousands of students doing a similar kind of thing. And uh, we, we, we uh, this is something that we have to do. It's part of the Ronald Reagan commandment that freedom is only one generation away from extinction and that we all have to renew it through your action, through our action. We also have our excellence in civic engagement program, and schools across the state are just flocking to that program now. And it teaches the separation of powers, it teaches the Constitution, teaches the Declaration of Independence, and uh, schools want that. They're hungry for it. And what, what I would like to do going moving forward is to get something in which a school can acquire a brand name. We teach the Constitution. Parents want that. They want to know that students learn the Constitution that they have memorized the preamble, that they have memorized the natural rights section of the Declaration of Independence, that they have memorized the Gettysburg Address, and these are things that are part of their, you know, held-to-the-heart values. So we, you know, our Excellence in Civic Engagement Program uh, are, you know, saluting the work that um, people such as yourself are doing. We think that all of these things are, are, are critical. And one of the things that I have taken incredible pride at is I was there at the beginning on a four to three vote on charter schools, moving it out of the education committee back in 1993, and then when I was chair chair of education, my first bill was to um, move from 50 charter schools to 50 per year. Now we have the the legacy schools, we have the Lexington Institute, we have the Benjamin Franklin schools, we have the Burke Basic Academy, we have a plethora of charter schools where they teach the Constitution, they teach the Declaration of Independence. They teach a robust, respectful history that lets people know that we are an ex- uh, just an absolutely exceptional nation that is is brings unbounded opportunity to those who have an opportunity to experience it. So, it, the uh, with a passion that I I am uh, you know advancing continuously, these kind of ideas are critically important. 
I grew up with books. My mom took me to the library every week, and I grew up on uh, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and George Washington books right from the beginning, Lewis and Clark. So <clears throat> this is something that we, we all need to be passionate about because it's critical not only to teach college and career-ready skills, but, to, but also to prepare us people to be Americans and to continue on the values that have made this country great. So, John, as you uh, vie for re-election, uh, where can people find out more about uh, your campaign? You have a website? I do, Hoopenthal2014. Hoopenthal2014.com. That's Hoopenthal2014.com. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you, John, for joining us uh, uh, this hour. I want to thank you for the lively discussion, for the debate. Yeah. And I think that's what we need, more uh uh, more lively debate as we move forward and, and recognizing that uh, to a large degree we're fighting for some of the same things but we might disagree along the way and I think we had a few disagreements but want to thank you for being a part of the discussion yeah and I, and I think we don't have any disagreements at all it's just the, the tactics by which we move from A to B and making sure that B is the place that that is the common vision place that it achieves what we want to achieve that in fact it's a state-driven place, that in fact that we control our own destiny there, and it's the fact that we've repelled the federal government and reduced their their influence over education in Arizona, and that it's truly a place that we as Arizonans have selected in our comfortable way. And I'm relentless about that. I'm going to, you know, we're going to keep moving that vision forward nonstop. And we're not just relentless about it. We're effective about it, too. Well, John, so thank, thank you, you so much. And uh, on this radio. We'd love to make it happen again. Thank you so you much. You bet. Thanks. There you have it. It was a good conversation, lively conversation. Love the debate. Uh, lively. You know, I, you know, I think the biggest frustration over the last hour was, and I and I think we get caught a lot in this sort of trap, and that is, you have a culture that wants to talk good idea, bad idea, and then you have others that say, you know what, I'm not going to whether it's good idea or a bad idea, constitutional it's, or not. Yeah. It, does the rule of law allow for this sort of thing? And uh, I think we've made it clear uh, over the course of this program that, you know, Common Core is, it, it, let's just assume for the sake of argument, let's just assume for the sake of argument that it's that a good it's idea. It's great. It's yeah. great. It produces great results. It, it is the way that it's, uh, the way that states are being compelled to adopt it. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, that's a very nice way to put it. The way that they're being compelled to adopt it using federal money. To get them to adopt these federal standards is is, is kind fundamentally of, unconstitutional. Kind of the hammer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hey, when we come back on the other side, I want to I want to continue on with this conversation about Common Core.